What? Did I say a bad word? If you are a good enough baseball player to make it to the major leagues, you have about a 1% chance that you will be remembered as one of the greatest players of all time. Add to that having a debilitating hand injury, and your chances don't look good at all. Then there's the case of Mordecai Brown, also known as Minor, and more famously, Three Finger Brown. Over a hundred years after he retired, Mordecai Three Finger Brown is still considered one of the greatest pitchers in Chicago Cubs history, and is fondly remembered in his home state of Indiana. Mordecai Peter Centennial Brown was born in 1876 in the tiny farming community of Nyesville, Indiana, about 50 miles west of Indianapolis. Although if you blink, you might miss it. All right, let's see. Oh wait, is that it? Oh, that's it, right there. Because okay. there's all the Cub stuff right there. If coming from the north, the barn with the multiple Cubs logos can help you find it. A beautiful marble and granite marker immortalizes Brown next to Nyesville Road. It was on this property that, when he was five years old, Brown got his right hand caught in a corn grinder, reportedly resulting from a dare by one of his brothers, slicing off one of his fingers. A separate fall permanently damaged his right hand, resulting in a paralyzed little finger, a mangled middle finger, and a stump in place of his index finger. Brown never viewed his disfigurement as a disability, and it led to a unique ability, a different way to grip a baseball, and thus a different way to spin a baseball. It was on this central Indiana farm that he first learned to throw. The farm and monument hardly stand out. You definitely have to know how to get here in order to find it. The location and quiet land are appropriate to Brown's legacy. He is usually known only to the most knowledgeable of Cub fans and baseball fans. Brown first played baseball for the semi-professional Terre Haute Hottentots of the Illinois-Indiana-Iowa League, before arriving in the majors with the St. Louis Cardinals in 1903. He began a nine-year stint with the Chicago Cubs in 1904, winning at least 20 games each season from 1906 through 1911. The practically unhittable spin of Brown's knuckle curveball helped him notch 239 wins in his major league career going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hall of Famer Christy Mathewson 25 times and winning 13 of those games. Brown led the Cubs to back-to-back -to -back World Series championships in 1907 and 1908. Ty Cobb, the greatest hitter of the first half of the 20th century, once said of Brown's curveball, it was the most deceiving, most devastating pitch I ever faced. After retiring from baseball, Brown stayed true to his humble roots. He moved back to Terre Haute and became involved with the local minor league team. For over a dozen years, he operated a Texaco filling station at the northeast corner of 7th and Cherry Streets in downtown Terre Haute. Many local residents would visit the filling station to meet and hear stories from the baseball legend. In 2010, a historical marker was erected on the former site of the filling station which is now a part of the campus of Indiana State University. Brown died in 1948 at the age of 71. He is buried in Terre Haute's Roselawn Memorial Park next to his wife, Sarah. The next year, the Veterans Committee elected Brown to the National Baseball Hall of Fame, officially making him a part of that elite 1% of Major League Baseball players. He's the first Indiana-born player inducted in Cooperstown. His career earned run average of 206 is the third lowest of anyone in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Today, over 70 years after his death, Cub fans still make the pilgrimage to his birthplace in Nyesville, as shown by the notebook filled with visitor names in the mailbox right behind the monument. A lot of folks from Terre Haute. Makes sense. Bullpen needs help tonight, Mort. <laughs> 
first page right after they won the World Series in 2016. Brown's legacy lives on through the Mordecai Brown Legacy Foundation, which can be found at MordecaiBrown.com. The foundation includes an online museum, which served as a valuable resource for this video. One of the top 100 things every Cubs fan should know and do. Pretty cool. 